Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on where you are in the world. I'm Javed Metz from Contrast Security. And um, we thank you for attending the Contrast Security webinar, Application Security Testing for an Agile and DevOps World. Before we dive into the presentation, I'd like to go over a couple of uh, housekeeping items. If you've got a question at any time during the webinar, please use the Ask a Question tab located below the player. Your question will be addressed during the Q&A session at the end of the presentation. At the end of the webinar, please take a moment to rate this presentation and provide feedback using the Rate This tab button below the player. If you've got any technical difficulties, go to the bottom of the page and click on Support for Viewers. And finally, a recorded version of this presentation will be available shortly following the conclusion of this presentation, so feel free to share it with your friends and colleagues. Now I'd like to introduce you to our speaker, Omar Winkler, Principal of Products at Contrast Security. All right, thank you, Javed, and thanks everybody for joining our webinar. As Javed mentioned, we will be uh, talking today about application security testing and try to provide some insight into various testing tools and approaches and address how they might apply to agile and DevOps environments. To set up the stage, I'll start with a brief introduction into Agile and DevOps and uh, quickly touch on the key challenges this process and methodology introduce for application security testing. Then we will um, talk a little bit about the three dominant application security testing methodologies, um, also known as SAS, TEST, and IAST, which respectively stand for static, dynamic, and interactive application security testing. And we will um, dissect them a little bit to understand each one's advantages and disadvantages and ultimately try to answer what should be used, how, when, and where. And finally, we'll summarize with a number of the key elements to successful implementation and open up the line for Q&A. Okay, so let's jump right into it. In today's world where nearly every organization uses software to transform itself, we're seeing an explosive growth in the sheer amount of software that is being rolled out to market. And while application layer attacks are being executed by bad actors as a leading vector to breach companies, we're not doing a good enough job at protecting software at the other side of that equation. And uh, organizations are definitely not investing enough or not investing effectively enough in security testing. And this is something every business needs to be thinking about, right? How to best apply application security and specifically security testing uh, to protect its software. Now, to understand what has made it so difficult, you need to consider the fundamental transformative impact Agile and DevOps have on software development. First and foremost, DevOps significantly disrupted how teams work. The um, move from a sequential project-based waterfall process to an iterative and ultimately continuous hyper-agile process dramatically increase the velocity at which applications evolve and the pace at which they are um, released to market. And that is sort of fueled by increasing pressure from organizations to accelerate time to market really across the business. Secondly, we have seen a big shift in how applications are architected, where more modern applications are not designed as monolithic entities, but as microservices that are ultra-modularized and increasingly interfaced through APIs. So our software becomes more complex. And in support of all of that, we're seeing disruption around the infrastructure that allows us to streamline, codify, and optimize how and where software is being deployed and run. Finally, I'll just 
know that more software being released quicker to market changed how teams practice QA. Um, rather than being exercised as a late stage, dedicated and getting activity or phase, it is now being practiced in a continuous manner along the pipeline. And if you consider security vulnerabilities a quality issue, which they are, that means that we need to think about adapting security testing to modern development along the same lines. But that's difficult, um, in particular given the implications around how we test, what techniques we employ to find vulnerabilities, what it is that requires testing and protection, and also how we ensure scalability of our testing across a growing portfolio and really an ever-evolving environment. And in that process, many teams have found that some of these solutions they have been using for really over a decade now um, just don't work. They don't fit in this new paradigm. And mostly this is um, due to the fact that traditional solutions assume that a heavyweight explicit testing phase was in place. And this phase could take hours or days, if not even weeks, depending on the um, application and tool being used, before any meaningful and valuable feedback was expected to be provided back and actioned on. And the reason for that are, are multifold, but primarily they are rooted in the fact that many of these solutions generate too much noise in terms of false positives, false alarms. And this is just by nature of how they work, and we'll talk more about that later on. Moreover, these testing approaches were really designed for security professionals, not developers. So they require the involvement of security experts to effectively run, maintain, and, and ultimately see real value. And when you consider high-velocity workflows that rely on short feedback loops and extreme automation, this creates friction and, and delayed turnaround, um, which makes it very hard to scale and fit into an agile and, and, and DevOps um, um, environment. And we see that all the time. Um, um, we see DevOps teams ultimately ripping out or just working around tools that create bottlenecks and, and slow them down. And it's no wonder um, that research shows that only a small subset of CICD pipelines have effectively embedded security testing um, in line as a continuous practice. Okay, so let's take a, a look at the dominant security testing approaches in the market today, SAS, TEST, and IS. Static and dynamic solutions have been around and started gaining traction over a decade now. While IS is a newer breed, if you will, um, a new testing approach that has been introduced to market around five or six years ago. And as we will discuss, was really designed to overcome some of the key challenges and limitations with SAS and DAS. Now let's break it break this down a little bit further so we can better understand what these various testing techniques are. And we'll start with static security testing. Static testing technologies are designed to analyze code to find weaknesses um, when the code is not executed, hence it is static. These weaknesses might be security vulnerabilities, uh, but they could also point to implementation defects or even code design issues. Generally speaking, a static analyzer would um, look at source code or binary, sometimes both, and then would build an intermediary representation or model that will be used to simulate what the execution of that code 
might look like. And you can see here on the slide um, examples for models that might be generated, such as um, call graphs or syntax trees and, and, and others. And then once you have this approximation, the tool um, might apply various types of analysis, such as semantic checks would be very similar to what a compiler would do, uh, perhaps look at certain aspects of configuration, and also explore the various possible execution paths through the derived model for control flow and data flow analysis. Then the tool would report back its findings based on all these analyses. And you should typically um, expect a subsequent audit activity at that stage to triage and filter out um, any false positives, findings that are not real vulnerabilities or conditions that are not exploitable. Now, uh, th this is important. The biggest advantage of static analysis is that it does not require a fully built app. So it can start early. Theoretically speaking, you could potentially even apply it to fragments of code. However, this comes at a, at a cost in terms of both the accuracy of the results as well as the timeliness of the results. And I'll talk more about this in a, in a couple of slides. Moving on to dynamic testing. Um, dynamic testing is used to test an application during runtime. The idea here is to execute a wide range of HTTP requests, which could represent various attack scenarios. Record the application's responses in the context of these events, and then analyze them to identify cases where the tool was able to exploit the application. In dynamic testing, you really only have visibility into the HTTP traffic that is generated during um, the test. And that means the tool is blind to the inner workings of the application itself. So you don't see the actual execution within the application. And this is why DAS tools or scanners are sometimes referred to as black box testing. Now, the uh, biggest advantage with DAS is that it can find real vulnerabilities. Um, unlike the simulated vulnerabilities that static testing may, may, may find. However, I, I will say that similar to static testing, applying dynamic um, um, testing also comes at a cost, both in terms of its limited scalability and delayed turnaround, as well as the effective accuracy of the results. And um, again, we'll explore why that's the case in a, in a couple of minutes. So we've talked about FAST and DAST as two approaches to um, application security testing. Let me now introduce the third and the more modern approach, if you will, that is known as IAST, or Interactive Application Security Testing. So while Dynamic testing is designed to scan a running application from the outside. And static testing attempts to infer what such code execution might look like from the inside. IAST has a great advantage in that it can both observe the HTTP traffic to and from the running application, as well as see the actual runtime execution inside of the application in the context of any such request or response, um, which, as you can imagine, is, is what gave it its name, interactive. Now, implementations um, may vary, but they would typically be based on instrumentation, which uh, would allow the IS solution to weave a set of sensors into a running application for purposes of monitoring its behavior um, and analyzing its security in the context of different events. What instrumentation is and how it works is beyond the scope of this webinar, but for those that are less familiar with this concept, let me just say that instrumentation is a 
capability that allows code to be added or, or modified at or during runtime in a way that is transparent to the application it has been injected to. And this technique has been used for many years to address a number of use cases. Perhaps the, more, the most well-known is the case of application performance monitoring, or APM, that has been using instrumentation to track different runtime usage metrics, error conditions, etc. And with IS, we're leveraging this technology for security purposes. In order to instrument an application, an IS agent is installed on the application server hosting the target application, and then the agent would automatically kick into action during startup. Um, the, the graphic here on the slide shows the extremely deep visibility IS has across all layers throughout the entire stack. And the more advanced solutions leverage that to perform a variety of analysis from analyzing the code that loads into memory, um, which includes analysis of libraries and open source components implemented in the application, through various configuration inspections, um, um, all the way to an exact control and data flow analysis for each event throughout the running application. And that, in turn, allows IS to pinpoint vulnerabilities with very high accuracy. Now, I mentioned that implementations may vary. And one important distinction is between active and passive implementations. Older generations of IS were um, coupled with a death scanner sitting in front of the instrumented application. And the agent, or IS component, would see traffic actively induced by the scanner with um, specially crafted inputs. And this makes the entire process more complicated to deploy and scale and essentially negates the benefits that IS can bring in terms of automation and its ability to be continuous. Passive IS, on the other hand, does not require a scanner in front of it. It just works based on execution of application during normal testing. It can be unit testing, integration testing, end-to-end -end functional testing, what have you. And by virtue of that, passive IS can effectively eliminate the need for the extra steps associated with dedicated security testing activities and can be run um, passively and continuously with the normal development and testing process. OK, we talked about different approaches to application security testing. Now let's explore what are some criteria that you can use to evaluate various solutions. And we listed here um, what we think are the most relevant criteria to AST and Agile and, and DevOps, but there uh, definitely might be other dimensions that can be added to the mix. So the first thing um, you should consider is, is process fit. Any solution that you choose to implement needs to align with your process and, and stay in your flow. Secondly, evaluate the accuracy of the solution. This is going to be critical to your ability to drive adoption and achieve automation and scale. And when you think about automation and turnaround, you should look for solutions that offer easy, repeatable, and automated deployment that can enable short feedback loops from analysis back to action. And this is critical where in DevOps you may have tens of CICD pipelines running hundreds of builds every single day. Finally, and, and equally as important, think about developer usability. And, and here what I mean is that a solution should provide accurate findings with comprehensive remediation guidance that any developer can act on, in addition to having all this data delivered to developers within the tools they already use. So to effectively um, limit um, context switching. 
And very quickly, here are some examples of KPIs that you might adopt to track or measure the performance and outcomes of any solution um, you might choose to use. But I'll, I'll, I'll skip that for now. So now that we have this framework, uh, let's try and apply it to the um, ASD solutions that we've discussed. And I'll just preface that, again, there are various nuances for how tools in either category are implemented. So consider this um, more of a generalization that is aimed to point to um, commonalities at a higher level. For process, both SAS and DAS involve extra steps, right? Dedicated testing activities, um, which could be lengthy and require the involvement of security experts. So, for example, in the case of DAS, uh, in the case of SAS, Experts would be involved in auditing the results before they can be passed on and consumed by developers. And um, with that, um, um, which is really a solution built for security uh, folks, it requires a more involved process to configure and tune to make it run effectively. I have, on the other hand, is not a technology built for security experts. Um, it's a transparent solution that any developer or tester can effectively run and use. And with IS, there is no dedicated security testing activities. No scans are required. That is, as it is all built and based on the normal testing of your application. So you can use it in a way that is continuous with your development process and delivery pipeline. With regards to accuracy, um, uh, both SAS and DAS are prone to error, um, both in terms of false positives as well as false negatives. Perhaps with SAS, false positives is more of an issue. Um, out of the box, many SAS solutions may produce an overwhelming number of false positives. And DAS, on the other hand, might miss a lot of real issues. Um, in any case, neither of these solutions are going to be nearly as accurate as IS is. IS simply has such an information advantage over static and dynamic um, testing approaches that allows it to produce um, very, um, um, that allows it to produce highly accurate results. For automation and turnaround, uh, both SAS and DAS will be limited in terms of what can effectively be automated, and um, you should expect slower turnaround um, um, than, than IS. And we talked about why that's the case, not just with the lengthy scans, but the overall process from setup and configuration through um, scanning and then triaging and, and sanitizing the results. Whereas in the case of IS, it can be fully automated from agent deployment all the way to results showing up instantly in a developer IDE or in a bot tracking system as, as examples. And finally, for developer usability, IS is really designed for developers and will be able to provide rich, contextual, and accurate information that would allow any developer to effectively remediate um, any vulnerabilities in their code. Well, in the case of DAS, as an example, um, results are really hard to trace back to line number, or in other words, translate to be translated to something that is meaningful for developers. Okay, so you have a DevOps shop. Um, now the question is, what should you use? And it's important to note here that every organization may have a unique set of requirements, and many times no two CICD pipelines are the same. Um, and, and this makes it very challenging to come up with a 
plug and play cookie, cookie cutter type solution. And so I'll just provide general guidelines to help get you started on the right track here. First thing, if you have a high velocity process, you should consider embedding IS into your CICD pipeline to accomplish continuous testing at scale. Um, when you evaluate various vendors, there are two elements that are worth um, considering. One around what support is provided for automating the agent deployment. And then secondly, whether the solution can really run in a, in a distributed fashion across your portfolio. Um, which would mean agents are not only used to monitor and record data, but also to perform the analysis in parallel. And we've seen other um, solutions that are tied to a centralized brain that is tasked with doing, uh, with performing analysis based on data or events um, communicated to it uh, from the agents. And this is important because a centralized analysis engine may become a choke point. It, it may become a bottleneck that would need it speed and scale. For SAS, you should um, use it in cases where IS is not supported. Um, and, should, and you should inquire with the various vendors to learn what languages and technologies and so on and so forth they support. When implementing a, a, a static testing solution, um, you should also be thinking critically about what cadence you define for the tool that would best fit your workflow. And, and one important thing to mention here is that in order to feed SAS into a high velocity workflow, many vendors have introduced this notion of incremental analysis or quick scans. And these types of analysis might be limited in what issues they can find. So for example, perhaps, perhaps they might only evaluate semantic or configuration issues, but not data flow or control flow. And they may also be limited by what they actually scan. So for example, they may perform analysis over a single file, which in itself is not going to be able to find the more complex and serious vulnerabilities that would require analysis of the whole program and a more comprehensive um, understanding of the interprocedural transactions being executed. So while these modes of operation uh, do produce faster results, they are tricky and you should understand exactly what they mean and avoid them when they produce more noise than signal. And finally, what we see with DAS is that it is being used more on ad hoc or periodic basis, many times in the context of certain um, compliance or regulatory requirements or um, as a tool leveraged by security um, and third parties to automate pen testing. Okay, so we have covered a lot of ground. So how do we now pull it all together? For Agile and DevOps, it's really important that you think about how you establish a security workflow that fits your pipeline, ensure that you are able to have instant security feedback to all stakeholders, and really build a security culture in your organization. And what you see here on this slide are six principles or keys that we believe will help you drive success. Um, number one, you want to start early. Don't delay testing to later stages in the process as that will be more costly to detect and remediate. You should embed a tool that allows you to get to a point where security testing is performed in a continuous fashion along your CICD pipeline. And look to automate it as much as possible 
to remove any bottlenecks. And that will allow you to achieve scale across your uh, portfolio and, and, and beyond human experts. Um, so you don't want to put security in a position where it becomes a bottleneck or is perceived as a blocker in your organization. And whatever solution you choose, make sure it's accurate, um, contextual, and actionable. In no way allow for uh, poor quality results to reach the hands of developers. This will not only result in, in friction, but also in them losing confidence in the tool itself. And finally, you should favor security solutions that are delivered in an integrated fashion and effectively help you reduce your dependency on managing and running multiple tools. And with that in mind, I'll, I'll hand it over to um, Jebet, who will elaborate a little bit more on how contrast can help you accomplish all of this. Well, thanks, Omar. Um, so in this webinar, we've discussed static, dynamic, and interactive approaches to protect your applications. In today's high-velocity agile DevOps world, customers really require and, in fact, demand that solutions protect them throughout the entire software development lifecycle. And additionally, customers need solutions that can provide quick, continuous, and accurate results. Um, Contrast can help you put it all together by delivering this on a single platform. Um, that you can feed information into all the key tools that developers use, as well as security practitioners and SOC teams use. When you look at the um, needs of developers, they require solutions that can automatically detect vulnerabilities during the development and testing phase, and operations and security personnel uh, that need to do things uh, and stop attacks in production. To identify vulnerabilities, Contrast Assess applies principles of static, dynamic, and software composition analysis. Contrast takes the best aspects of all of these types of solutions and technologies and applies them uh, for our interactive IaaS solution. So with Contrast Assess, you can see the code before the software runs. That is to say, you know, applying static analysis. You can also get to see and provide an inventory and analyze all the frameworks, libraries, and open source components, hence performing software composition analysis. Contrast instruments all the code within the software stack and finds vulnerabilities when the app runs, whether it's during dev testing, you know, QA features in review, performance testing. So Contrast Assess is used for developers and testers. With Contrast Protect, when it comes to protecting applications running in a production environment, you can defend against malicious attacks. You've got the ability to identify and stop attacks and protect your applications in these production environments. And we also provide application threat intelligence that offers security and the SOC tremendous visibility to see what's going on. So hopefully, We've whet your appetite, and we invite you to take us for a swim, uh, a spin, and we encourage you to schedule a demo. Um, you can see contrast in action um, and see how contrast security can help you with your AppSec testing needs. Uh, for further information, uh, you've got the URL below, and um, we encourage you to, to learn more about us and uh, take us for a, a test drive. Hey, Omar, we have a few questions from the audience. Uh, let me look through those. First question, can you elaborate more on what automation is available for SaaS, the static? Um, yeah. Uh, generally speaking, what we have seen on the automation front is that um, many, if not most, SaaS vendors have focused their efforts primarily on um, automating the process associated with initiating a scan. So they allow for scans to programmatically be invoked based on certain triggers, which then would um, you know, take care of packaging up the contents for the scan, uploading it to a scan server, et cetera. 
But um, as we discussed just a few minutes ago, making the scan run automatically does not mean you have fully automated your SAS, right? Um, getting your source code scanned is only part of the picture. The entire process includes post-scan steps related to uh, triaging false positives and so on. And on that end, I don't believe, at least to the best of my understanding, that we've seen dramatic progress in terms of automation that would effectively eliminate manual efforts. Um, and, and that is the uh, cost of inaccuracy. Um, perhaps another thing to think about that has to do somewhat with automation relates to any customization efforts for your SAS scans, which is something you'd have to do in many cases. And that would also may involve a lot of you know, human hours. So um, SAS made some progress on this, but is not there yet, um, in my opinion, especially when you compare it to a solution like Contrast that offers full automation. Okay, uh, next question. Uh, when is it best to initiate an IAS, an interactive scan? Is it during the build stage or testing in staging? Um, um, yes, the answer is yes to all of the above, with one correction that I'll make uh, specifically in regards to our solution, which does not involve a scan. So there is no scan to initiate. Contrast is inside the application, simply um, um, looking at the normal requests that are made to the application when you test it in, in, in any stage in your, in your pipeline. Um, and as such, um, it is designed to run continuously. So you can run it, run it on the dev machine all the way to your testing in UAT or even sometimes in, in production. And we, um, of course, provide the integrations with build systems, automated provisioning, various uh, path offerings, and so on to allow for automation across the, the CI-CD. In fact, you can also have um, a CI engine, as an example, talk to our service to automatically get security feedback that would inform it in real time whether to progress to the next step or not. So as an example, in the case of a build, you can have a condition that would fail that build or take another action uh, based on the results from contrast. Um, hey, Omar, since you brought this up, there's another question on breaking a build with fast. Um, would you recommend the same strategy with fast, with static? Um, for build, well, uh, let me just say this. If you were able to successfully integrate your SAS scans with your CI, and if scan results are available in time, I would say definitely feed the results back to the engine, but probably don't have it fail your build unless you're um, super confident in the tool's accuracy. And perhaps, you know, you've already done a lot of customization work, so you have that level of confidence, but otherwise, um, Perhaps see if you can mark builds that result in vulnerabilities above your accepted threshold, but don't stop the, the process. Uh, for example, I believe in Jenkins, you can um, tag a build as unstable, but still let it progress um, um, through the other uh, stages in the pipeline. Uh, otherwise, this might be very disruptive to your workflow um, and downstream activities. Uh, just uh, something to think about. Uh, the next question, does IAS Interactive have to wait until all test cases are complete before results are available similar to a completion of a scan? Um, uh, I'll answer this one for contrast specifically. The answer would be no, you will not have to wait. Results are going to be available in near real time. For other IS solutions, you should um, really inquire with their vendors. Um, and the next question, can you quantify how much more accurate IAS 
is than fast. Interactive is than static. <laughs> uh, yes, well, <laughs> accuracy is definitely an important topic, and um, measuring it is critical to understanding the differences between the various options we have for ASD. Um, so one resource that people can refer to is the OWASP benchmark. For um, those who are not familiar with OWASP, that's the Open Web Application Security Project. And they have created a free benchmark tool that you can think of as a test suite designed to measure the efficacy of various solutions. Um, and what's cool about the benchmark is that it contains a large number of real vulnerabilities as well as a large number of cases that only look like vulnerabilities but are not. Um, so that allows you to directly measure true positives and false positives um, and of course true negatives and, 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 and false negatives as the other side of that coin. Um, and when they ran tools against this benchmark, the, the results were overwhelming. I think for SAS, the best commercial tool um, could only find around 80 or 85 percent of the true positives, if I'm not mistaken. So it, it missed some real vulnerabilities or had false negatives, if you will. But more importantly, that, that same tool identified as vulnerabilities around 50 percent of the cases that were marked by the benchmark as false positives. So you have a very large number of cases um, several hundreds, in fact, that were not an issue that um, static still reported as vulnerabilities. Contrast, on the other hand, um, reached close to 99% on true positives. So we demonstrated superior detection coverage um, across the board. And it actually didn't pick up any false positives. So again, really um, um, outstanding accuracy um, for, for IS. Uh, and I'll just finish with this note. I think uh, for many people, the best course of action will actually be to quantify that directly, right? Uh, you can evaluate different tools side by side. You can do this in the context of a, a POC or otherwise. It doesn't really matter. Um, just know that you can um, measure um, this metric directly perhaps even alongside other metrics that are of interest to you, like um, mean time to remediate, um, scalability, whatever it is that, that you define. That's all I can see in terms of questions. So again, thank you to all attendees today for your time. Uh, please take a moment to rate the presentation and provide feedback using the Rate This tab below the player. And finally, a recorded version of this presentation will be available using the same URL shortly following the conclusion of this webinar. So feel free to share it with your friends and colleagues. And again, thank you uh, for your time and attending the webinar.